Bed Bath & Beyond has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection after the home goods store experienced a, a tumultuous year. It included layoffs, store closures. NBC News business and data reporter Brian Chong is here to help us figure out what it means for shoppers now. So first, Talk to us about what happened here. How did we get here? Yeah, Anna, for what it's worth, we've been hearing some headlines about Bed Bath & Beyond for a while. As you mentioned, they were already going through a pretty tumultuous year in terms of paring back their business. But now, with the filing yesterday of Chapter 11 bankruptcy, it's basically throwing in the towel for the 360 or so stores that they have across the country. And also, by the way, the 120 Bye Bye Baby locations, which are also part of the brand, they're going to begin the process of liquidating that brand. They could ultimately sell it to another buyer. But all of this is really the culmination of the transition to e-commerce. People don't really need to go to the store anymore to buy those things. They're not going to Bed Bath & Beyond. And when they are in a pinch, they're going to Target. They're going to Walmart, big box, one-stop shop types of places, which has really been part of the demise of not only Bed Bath & Beyond, but you think about the likes of Toys R Us, Sears, a lot of really iconic brands going under. So some, clo some stores have closed already, but not all. Can people get good deals right now before the rest of them close? Yeah, well, you mentioned those coupons, right? Which I feel like all of us have a stack of those 20% off coupons yeah. somewhere in our houses. But uh, those coupons will only be good today and tomorrow. Effective Wednesday, those coupons will no longer work. And the reason why is because they expect to begin the liquidation sales on Wednesday. So you might even find better discounts beyond the 20% if you go stop by your local Bed Bath & Beyond on that day. Uh, in the middle of May, they'll stop honoring gift cards. And then a few weeks after that, that those stores could ultimately be closed. Okay, so use them before it's too use them late. Or lose them. Yep. That's the yeah, that's the idea. Let's pivot to Disney, which is set to announce some layoffs. I understand how many jobs are we talking? Yeah, so there's uh, they're doing this in waves and essentially we're in the middle of the second round of layoffs. This is part of their overall efforts to trim about 7 thousand jobs up until about this week according to CNBC they've laid off about 4,000 this week's layoffs will include those at ESPN which is owned by Disney as, as well as Disney Entertainment uh, broadly speaking this is just part of the overall issue in the media industry with advertising dollars kind of drying up uh, Disney also have a, has a pretty substantial parks business so you know again it's not just Disney uh, you see it in the tech sector as well a lot of layoffs happening in this economy speaking of layoffs rideshare lift is set to cut about a thousand jobs what does that suggest to you yeah and the S is that's about 30% of the workforce. That's very serious. And it's not just Lyft. It's really a lot of these tech-focused companies, which as interest rates have risen, they've really pared back on the more aggressive hiring that they did during the pandemic. It would seem that during 2020, a lot of these tech companies said, we expected our businesses to grow a lot faster than they ultimately did. They're paring back on that. And for what it's worth, uh, Lyft has a new CEO. And these layoffs are just kind of the first step in them trimming back that company, really prioritizing cash flow in this really tough environment. Thank you for making sense of it all for us, Brian. Brian Chong, good to see you. Yep.